Mr. Pandemonium! The wind's picking up. We gotta get out of here. Woo! My name is Judah Clark, and at the moment I'm traveling around with my partner in crime, Christine, and sometimes her identical twin sister, Victoria, with the Fisher Twins. Together we travel all over Florida, exploring each new area above and below the sea. We just arrived in Key West, the farthest tip of the string of islands on the southernmost part of Florida. We rented a place for a bit to escape the cold up north. That's why people pay so much to be down here this time of year, is because this is just beautiful weather, just amazing. This time of year, the rest of the country are freezing their butts off with snow-covered roads. Down here, it's 72 degrees on a normal winter day, which is why it's so busy and expensive to be down here this time of year. We just purchased a map of sunken wrecks all over Florida, and we had planned to explore them and see what kind of treasures we may find. There's a lot of treasure down there in Florida in these wrecks. Sounds like a good time. Shoot some fish along the way. Key West is an amazing place because you can easily access two very different oceans in the same day, the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Depending on how hard and which way the wind is blowing, one ocean can be very different from the other. Since we had just gotten into town, we had to go to the fish market and buy some fish. Crazy that it was $160. I can't believe we spent $160 on a slab of fish. Look at that. And just a couple of claws. $160. We can't wait to catch our own fish and for free, and it'll be a lot fresher than this. It was our first day back in Key West and our first time getting to go out on the boat in nearly two months after catching COVID and having the boat in the shop getting a bunch of work done. The old Triton was really starting to show her age. Freaking boat is a mess. It's a mess! We were down to the last cushion and the exterior was looking rough. I checked her into rehab and she got a new start in life. Vera Upholstery took good care of her and now she feels like a brand new boat. Look at that. Looks a little better, huh? I was thinking about trading her in but decided to restore her to her original glory. Also seemed fitting since I'm in the restoration business. Oh, this looks nice. Real nice, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a brand new boat. We've been together a long time, and I'm happy to have her back. And I know the girls are too. Those two months were a really long time for us to be out of the water, but we couldn't wait to get back at it. Well, so far so good. Launched the boat, parked the trailer, got Christine up there holding the fort down. And then we're gonna head to the house. Well, listen, let's get suited up. Let's get loaded up. Get out there, it's clear water. It gets dark at six. Let's go catch some moose. I hope to never be away from the ocean that long again in my life. It was not fun. I don't know why you're the trying to take it. With the shafts. Why were you taking the guns I was taking over here? Watch where you're swinging things around. Just like the twins, the two oceans on either side of the keys can look the same on the surface, but be very different underneath. Always a good time with these two. Man. Good to be back. Been a minute, huh? Mm -hmm. We were headed out for a very small window of opportunity in the weather before it was going to be rough for the next couple of days. We had a late start getting everything set up, so we didn't get on the water till about 2.30 and the sun was going to set at 6.30, which didn't give us a whole lot of time to find dinner. The plan was to see if we could find any wahoo in the Atlantic and we had a long drive to get where we were going to look for them. This was also Christine and I's first trip using our new Alamani 110 spear guns. These fine pieces of craftsmanship were our Christmas presents to each other, and we were excited to use them. How's the water look? Uh, it's blue. Yeah! Yeah, I was looking at the satellite images, and it looked pretty clear. We get out to the area we want to explore, and I tell the girls to get suited up and get ready while I drive around looking for fish on the sonar. 
I'm not really finding much bait like I was hoping for. Well, I haven't marked any bait at all. I don't know what to do. But we were losing time. You all ready? Go ahead and get in. So I had them jump in and make a few drifts while I got suited up for my turn to dive. A little hectic. Let's see what happens. The girls are making a few dives, and they're not seeing any wahoo. I see a kingfish. <laughs> nice. Don't shoot it. Victoria comes across a nice kingfish, but it wasn't our target species. And it wasn't a fish we wanted to eat for dinner, so she didn't take the shot. There were big bull sharks everywhere, and they were sure to rush in and steal anything that we shot. This water sucks, and there's like 10 bull sharks. Well, get on. Visibility is not that great. No? No. We're a little rusty. We've been eating a bunch of ice cream. We got the Rona. Haven't dove in two months, almost. A little grumpy, but uh, we'll figure it out. I see a storm brewing in the distance, but it's downwind of where we are, so I think it must be going the other way. All right, so what do we do, girls? Do another drift here or go somewhere else? There's a lot of sharks here. Though. We decided to move to another spot, see if we could find some fish, and to see if we could get away from these sharks. I'm getting in this next drop. I don't know who's driving. Victoria's already got her fence off. Oh. I loaded my new Alemani spear gun for the first time. First time loading my Alemani 110. It's a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, and you can see the attention to detail in every bit of this gun. I'm excited to shoot this gun. The bands are tight, and I can just barely load it, which means it's going to be very powerful. That is a bitch to load. Beautiful though. This was going to be one powerful mother sucker. It was now my turn to dive. Based on the direction the girls were drifting, I line us up to start out deep at around 125 foot and drift into the reef that gets as shallow as 40 foot in this area. I'm good? Okay. Currents have changed, or are just different in this area. Instead of drifting into the reef, we drift out deeper. I'm not seeing any fish other than a few ocean triggerfish. Triggerfish are great to eat, but not the prized fish of Oahu, the fish I was hoping for. I decide to shoot my gun for the first time and take a triggerfish to make sure we had dinner for the night. The gun shoots fast, powerful, and accurately. I hit the fish exactly where I aimed and the shaft went straight through the fish. I was impressed. I swim back up to the surface to pull up and dispatch my fish. Christine dives down and lines up on another trigger fish and fires. Dinner is served! <laughs> Christine brought her fish in as well, and we had another couple's double. Babe, let's get in the boat. I signaled to Victoria to come pick us up. Victoria pulls up and tells me we are not drifting as planned as we get onto the boat and set up for the next drift. This storm is coming right for us. At least we got two triggers. The seas have really picked up since I was last on the boat. Victoria tells me with wide eyes she really had to pay attention driving because the waves were getting scary. It turned sour on us! The storm is clearly getting closer, despite the wind direction making me think otherwise earlier. The wind's picking up, we gotta get out of here! Drive us to the next spot. This time we'll start out shallower and drift into deeper water, opposite of the last drift. The ocean, while it looks still on the surface, is moving like a river, and the water currents and speed directions change all the time. We try to predict where to get into the water so that the current direction drifts us right over where we think the fish are in a particular area. Once we pass over that area, the boat picks us up and we set up for the next drift. The waves are really getting big now. I wonder if we should just head home. I've never got enough for dinner. Got the storms rolling, it's pretty rough. The girls say just one more drift. What do y'all think? Oh, well I wanted to get in again. Huh? Wanna do one more drop? Sure. Okay, 
One more drift it is. We're getting set up for the next drift and the waves continue to grow until all of us decide maybe it's just not worth it. These waves are getting big. Maybe we should just go then. This is getting rough. Let me look at the storm. Now nah, we should go. We might just miss it. Oh yeah, we, we're not gonna, yeah, we need to go. We unload our guns and start to head back as quickly as possible. And now it's clear. Actually, we're not gonna miss shit. <laughs> Okay, that's us. Whoa. That's us, that's the storm. We have a long ride back and it's not as nice of a ride as it was on the way out here, especially since the sun is setting and is starting to get colder. The wind against our soaking wet wetsuits is also making us cold. Ain't nothing dry around here. Everything's wet. got cold and windy and rough and rainy. It's just the way I like it. We get back just in the nick of time to clean the boat with a little daylight left to help us see what we are doing. Okay. Woo! While the girls are cleaning the gear, I'm cleaning the fish to make dinner with our two trigger fish. That just so happen to be enough for three people to have fresh fish tacos. It's enough for fish tacos for three people right there. Mm. The trip didn't go as planned, but it was good to be back on the water even though I really only got to make one or two shallow dives. It's stormy days like this that really make things exciting. I'm so grateful to have the twins in my life that are just as adventurous as I am and always ready for anything I'm ready for. A few days had passed and the winds and waves died down. Christine and I wanted to explore the Gulf of Mexico, a completely different ocean than a few days prior. The water wasn't going to be as clear and calm in the Atlantic. Well, tomorrow. We're gonna be eating on fresh mutton. I can smell it. Basically what, just mutton? Mm-hmm. And mangrove. Well, I'm really excited to check these new wrecks. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of sunken ships all over Key West and in depths ranging from 10 foot to 150 foot. It can be an amazing experience when you find a good one. I just purchased a map of wrecks from an old fisherman who made me swear not to share them with anyone else. The map has hundreds of wrecks on it, and he said some were easier to find than others, whatever that meant. I was anxious to explore these wrecks and see what kind of treasures we could find. I need to take advantage of every single weather window of opportunity that we get, because who knows how many days we're actually going to be able to die. How windy is it supposed to be? Tomorrow it's gonna calm down at one point to like five knots and the next day it's like ten unfortunately Victoria had to work this day and a buddy of mine I had lined up to dive with us bailed on me at last minute so it was just going to be Christine and I Water looks clear. So what do you think? The Gulf or Fawahu? I'm a little nervous because I haven't dove in the past two months after getting COVID. I talked to one of my good buddies, Joe, who had just gotten COVID and said that his breath hold is now 45% less than it was before he got COVID. That's a lot. It's like almost like 50%. It's like you're holding your breath for like a minute. That's cool. Let me explain. We are free dive spear fishermen and women. We take one big deep breath and dive down as deep as we can and look around for the right fish we want to harvest for food. Once we pick out our fish, we shoot it with a spear gun and make our way back up to the surface as quickly as possible to take another breath of air. All while trying not to black out from lack of oxygen. <laughs> Sometimes we have to defend our catch from sharks, goliath grouper, and barracuda, which can create some dangerous situations delaying you from reaching the surface. The longer you can stay down there, the more time you have to hunt and secure the perfect fish, and the longer you have to survive. Yeah! 
not that crazy. I mean, we love it. As free divers, we strive to increase our breath hold more and more each year. And so to lose 45% of your breath hold and ultimately your bottom time due to COVID, well, that's just terrible. And I hope that wasn't going to be the case for me. I just bought this chip from a guy that's got all these crazy wrecks out in the Gulf. I'm really looking forward to hitting. It's just fun, man. I feel like I come back to life when we're in the water. We started to explore the Gulf, trying to find some of these wrecks, but with no luck. We find ourselves driving around in circles where the map marks the spot, but not seeing anything on the sonar. A little shallow. Maybe we should go out deeper. It could be really old wrecks. Sonar shows us if anything is on the bottom, like structure or fish. Can we go out deeper, see if it gets clearer? Yeah. I suspect the wrecks are close by, but not as accurately marked on the map as I had originally hoped. None of these damn wrecks are panning out. It's kind of lame. I was beginning to think I had been ripped off by the old man with the fake treasure map. Well, once again, no wreck. Well, let's try the next spot. There's a boat over there. Okay, we got a wreck, babe. Mark and fish. We finally pull up to a wreck and there's a ton of life on it. Yes, yes, a lot of structure here, a lot of fish. The coordinates on this map are a little screwy, but I'm starting to figure it out and find the wrecks. Look at this, the wreck extends 700 feet from the other mark. So on other marks, like we ought to go 700 feet west. Prepare to drop anchor. Okay, go ahead. There's some sharks around the boat already. I don't even have any fish. Those look like the size that are a little feisty. I don't like it. 75 foot, which is a little too deep for Christine to reach the bottom right now especially after being so rusty not diving for the past two months. It's the right depth for me, normally, but I'm also a little rusty and it's not gonna be a walk in the park getting down there as much as the man in me doesn't like to admit it. See you in the drink. <laughs> the water is also freezing this time of year. In the Atlantic Ocean an hour earlier, the water temp was 74 degrees. But out here in the Gulf, it's 69 degrees, which may not seem like much of a difference, but it is. It's also colder on the bottom than it is the surface. Luckily, we have our Waihana wetsuits that range in thickness from 1, 3, 5, and 7 millimeters that we can choose to wear based on the different water temps. Christine and I were excited to use our new Alamani spear guns we got for each other for Christmas. We would got a chance to fire them for the first time the other day before we got shut out by the violent storm. But today we get to put them to work. First, I needed to load my gun, which is not an easy task. It takes a lot of energy to load a spear gun, especially one as powerful as this. Spear guns are not like normal guns that use bullets. A spear gun has thick rubber bands that store the energy you use to pull them back and release that energy into thrusting a spear through the water when you pull the trigger. The harder the bands are to stretch and the more strength you have to use to pull the bands back means the more powerful the gun will be and the faster, farther and harder you can throw that shaft to hit a big fish. Big fish or a fish that's farther away requires more power in your shot so the right spear gun with the right power is critical to your success. These Alamani spear guns are the best of the best. A true work of art, handcrafted in Italy. And this size of 110 centimeters is the perfect size gun for the type of fishing we're about to do. I now have a 135, a 110, and a 90 centimeter. And Alamani is the only gun I will shoot from now on. After loading my gun, I'm all worked up and slightly out of breath. I need to float here on the surface for a few minutes, calming down my heart rate. I'm also breathing in a certain way so that I can increase my oxygen content as well as decrease my carbon dioxide. I'm finally ready for my first dive. I take one long deep breath, pull the snorkel out of my mouth, pinch my nose to equalize and dive straight down. I'm kicking slowly with my long fins until I start to sink down to the old decaying shipwreck that lies on the ocean floor. 
I start to see the bottom, and it's loaded with fish, including a few really nice mangrove snapper. These snapper are a great eating fish, and they are of good size, so I decide not to waste any time down here and shoot one for dinner. I'm making my way up to the surface, pulling up my fish with me, and a shark comes flying out of nowhere. Instinctively, I poke the shark with my shaft, and it takes off back to the depths. I then see three or four more sharks behind it, and they're circling me and darting in and out with erratic behavior. I finally reached the surface and held the fish out of the water so the sharks couldn't see it. I don't have eyes in the back of my head, and I didn't want a shark to sneak up behind me grabbing the fish and ultimately my hand with it. Christine was just getting into the water and comes to assist me. That was a close call, I tell her, but at least I've got dinner. Man, sharks came in on me hot. I had to stab one. The thought crossed my mind to move to a different spot because these sharks were relentless. Look at that, I got a grunt too. All right, babes, what do you want to do? It's normally best to move to a different spot with less sharks, but this spot was 40 miles from home, was difficult for us to find, and had a ton of fish on it. Screw the sharks? Screw those sharks. We're not moving. I put my fish into the boat and get back into the water, load my gun and start trying to relax again. Christine makes a dive, but can't reach the bottom just yet. She needs to though, because that's where all the delicious fish are. There are barracudas that are shallower, but that's not a fish that we eat, and we weren't going to shoot one. I think some people think we spear any fish we see, but it's a very selective form of fishing, and the most ethical and environmentally friendly form of fishing there is. I make a second dive and secure another mangrove snapper. I immediately grab the fish and try to prevent it from creating vibrations in the water that would attract the sharks, and it worked. I'm swimming to the boat and Christine yells at me. I turn around and a big bull shark was sneaking up behind me. That was a close call. She scares the shark off and we got a second mangrove snapper in the boat. He was coming in hot. These sharks are really starting to piss me off. But that's just the name of the game. Be careful and cover each other's back when we get a fish. You did good. I shot that guy. He, he looked big down there. Oh, he is big. Whew. Well, I got dinner for the next two nights. Christine and I once again discuss finding another spot, but decide to give it a few more dives. I get back into the water and I'm loading my gun. Christine is breathing up for her next dive. All of a sudden a huge cobia swims up to me and I yell for Christine. While most people would have taken a half-assed shot from the surface, she takes her time in a relaxed shallow dive and lines up patiently, placing the perfect shot in the fish with her new powerful spear gun. She starts the cobia rodeo and now I'm really concerned that the sharks are going to come in on this one and my gun was only half loaded. I swam around her in circles keeping my eyes open and she tried to secure the fish that was going ballistic. And wouldn't you know there wasn't a shark to be seen. <laughs> you! Nice. I think they got the point. We didn't move spots off. That was awesome. It was a good time celebrating our fish. We took a couple of pictures and cleaned up the boat and immediately put the fish on ice. Cobia is a delicious fish, and now we not only had dinner for the evening, but the next couple of weeks. We enter the water once again, and I finish loading my gun. When I'd shot that last mangrove, I had hit a smaller fish as well, a grunt. Unlucky for that fish, but not near as unlucky as the millions of pounds of bycatch sucked up, killed, and discarded back into the ocean from commercial fishing nets all over the world. In spearfishing, nothing goes to waste, so I use that little dead fish as bait. I throw the fish far ahead of me because the current is slightly moving behind me. I let the fish sink as I breathe up, getting ready for my dive. The water is slightly murky, so I don't take my eyes off that fish as it slowly descends to the bottom. The idea is that a nice predator fish down on the bottom will see that fish sinking and start to approach it. While it's distracted by that fish, it doesn't see me quietly approaching. I get down to the bottom and at first I don't see anything. I look to my left, I look to my right, 
And then I look behind me and all of a sudden I see the biggest, most beautiful mutton I've seen in months. And I slowly turn around to take a shot. I fired and I stoned the fish, which means I killed it instantly with the shot. The fish didn't suffer for any amount of time, unlike the trillions of fish caught in nets each year that are left eventually to die on the decks of the ship due to suffocation, before eventually being placed on ice. This is clearly a more humane way to harvest fish. I start to head up to the surface, pulling the fish towards me so I could keep it away from the sharks, but there was one problem. My shaft was stuck in the wreck. I had to quickly swim over to the fish and free up my shaft before I could make my way to the surface. Fearing a shark may come in, I held the fish close to me and made my way up. I didn't see any sharks on that dive and it definitely didn't hurt that that fish didn't move an inch when I shot it. That's a pretty big mud. I'm glad we decided to stay at this spot. It's really produced well and the sharks got the point. Exactly what I wanted for dinner. What a beautiful mutton snapper. This is one of the most prized fish in Florida because it's also one of the best eating fish in Florida. That was a perfect stone shot. Stone him <laughs> cold. You got three fish in one shot. You shot all three of those at one? Yeah. It's also a very difficult fish to spear, especially if you don't know what you're doing. It's done this. Precise. He didn't suffer at all. Beautiful, thank you, buddy. Out of all the fish we caught today, this is the one I looked forward to eating the most. Look at how beautiful this fish is. That's exactly what I wanted today. I decided to go for one last dive of the day. And, shortly after, we get into the boat and I start feeling like I need to cough. <coughs> <coughs> Felt a little something like Surely remnants of my COVID flu I recently had. <laughs> wow. I spit up a bit of blood. That is not good. Uh oh, that's not good. Is that what is that? Bloody mucus. I mean, it means you need to take a break from diving. When free diving, you always want to check and see what you cough up to make sure there's no blood. Spitting blood means you tore your lung or throat slightly and you should stop diving and allow it time to heal. I wasn't sure what it was, but whatever it was, it wasn't good and we should call it a day. <clears throat> Maybe I ought to take a break after that. Yeah. Blood in the lungs. What is wrong with you? I think it's COVID. Joe said he got 45% reduction in breath hold. I mean, it, I've been hacking up stuff for like two months. No need him pushing it. It's our first real dive day back. A couple of nice dives. <coughs> oh, that last dive didn't feel the greatest either. We had enough fish anyways, and we had a long ride home. It's unfortunate that I spit up blood, because now I'm not supposed to dive for at least a month while I heal. Having not dove in the past two months, this is pretty frustrating and depressing to say the least. The sun is setting faster and faster as it hits the horizon, and we get closer and closer to Key West. We come up to an area that looks like we could cut through the shallow backwaters and make it back quicker, as long as we didn't make any mistakes and run aground. It's gonna be an adventure. Let's try it. Although there was an easier way to get home, this shortcut would get us there faster, and this way feels like a winding racetrack running at full speed, 45 miles per hour in flat, calm waters. It was a lot of fun. We made it back just in the nick of time to watch a beautiful sunset. We were not the only ones watching the sunset. Millions of people each year come to Key West, and there's one thing that everyone loves to do when they come here, which is watch the sunset on Mallory Square. It's a great time to reflect on the day and give thanks to the bountiful blessings bestowed upon us without a hair being harmed on our heads. And all I gotta say was today was a good day. I finally got to use my new gun. Why did you do that? What you guys are waving at me, man. They were waving at me. You're so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm embarrassing, man. I'm just getting started. <laughs>